I am super glad that you have stumbled across this YouTube video because there's a lot of content out there these days that talks about how to become a social media manager and they don't actually tell you how. <laughs> so in this video, I'm gonna be answering the most common questions I get from new social media managers, people who are just starting out, and I'm really gonna demystify stuff and I'm quite excited. I've been working as a social media manager for almost two years now, over a year of which has been full-time. This is my full-time business. I freelance, work with a whole host of different businesses, um, but if you wanna hear more about that, go check out my other videos. For now, we are gonna jump in to these questions and address all of these tips. The first question I always get is, what is a social media manager actually responsible for and what do they do? And don't click out if you think that's a boring question. If you have sort of been watching a few of these videos on social media management, you're like, duh, I know what it is. I like, I know what they do. They like post Instagram and Facebook posts and they write things and they do the hashtags, like it's all good. The thing is, is from the outside, social media management can look really simple and really easy. But once you actually start doing it and you start, you know, creating your packages and your offers, creating a website, maybe your Instagram page, all of that jazz, it becomes very overwhelming. And that's because there's a lot that falls under the social media and digital marketing umbrella. You can be doing Facebook, you can be doing Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, podcasts, writing blogs, um, there are so many things. LinkedIn, there's so many platforms. And then on top of that, you've got all of like the paid advertising, like your Google ads and your Facebook ads. And there is just a lot when somebody approaches you and asks you what you do. If you don't actually like understand your position and your role and what you offer, you're gonna get very confused, you're gonna get very overwhelmed and you're not gonna be successful in this industry. The secret to being a really good social media manager is actually not doing all of these things. It's way too much, no one can do all of those things. And you don't wanna be this super generalized person anyway. You want to be specialized. So what I want you guys to do is to pick maybe two, max three, maybe even just one of these things, these platforms that you are most passionate about about and you think you can really excel at. So for example, me, I am an Instagram specialist. So I'm a social media manager, but Instagram is my jam. That is my platform. I love it and I chose that because it's what I had the most experience using and it got me excited. Like Facebook doesn't excite me. I'm sorry if you're a Facebook specialist. I'm just not about Facebook. If you go to my Instagram page, which is at Ellen McKenzie with two E's on the end, if you guys are interested in following me, if you go there, you'll see that I market myself as an Instagram specialist. That is my Instagram. Industry. If you go to my website, you'll see that all of my packages and offer are focused on Instagram. And then one other thing that I do add in is auto sharing to Facebook. So all of my clients posts that go on Instagram get auto shared to Facebook. So I am kind of ticking off that box. Um, makes me like a little more useful, but I'm not a Facebook specialist again, and I get to work on the platform that I love. From there, once you have your specialty, after I was working in this industry or doing this job for about a year, I started sort of expanding and taking on a few other roles with my current clients. Now that's key. These people were brands I was already familiar with because you know, they were my clients. I'd been working on their Instagram pages for either a couple of months or maybe even a year, and we had developed a good friendship, and these clients had come to me and be like, hey, we really wanna start doing blogs or we really wanna start doing email newsletters. Can you help us with that? And it's a really great way to scale your business, to start making more money off one client because that is the dream when you have a client who's paying you like $1,000 a month. But the key is don't do this when you're a beginner. When you're just starting out, specialize. Just do Instagram, just do Facebook, just do Twitter. Just pick one thing and then you can build on it from there. And just quickly, for those of you who are wondering like my day-to-day -day tasks as a kind of Instagram specialist, I am writing captions, I am researching hashtags, I am posting these onto the feed for my clients. Um, I create Instagram story graphics in Canva. Um, I edit Instagram stories that my clients send me. I inst uh, edit Instagram reels that people send me. Um, so it's a lot of like editing and curating. And then sometimes I am shooting product photos as well. So I'm creating custom content for them. On top of that, I also do the engagement and like replying to comments, keeping on top of the DMs. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot just on Instagram. So it's a lot to do. It's a big platform. And this is again, why you should specialize in one thing because there's, there's a lot more to social media than people think from the surface level. It's not just like, oh, you just write a post and put it up. Ooh, so easy. <laughs> 
Question number two that I get a lot in response to a video that I posted last year about how to become a social media manager. And in that video, I talked a lot about like business strategy. I talked about like building your agency, um, mindset and things to market yourself, lots of stuff like that. And I didn't actually talk about like Instagram strategy. So the growth hacks, the things you need to do for your clients. So a lot of people always ask me like, oh, well, this is all good. You've given me some great tips, but like, how do I actually do this stuff? Like, how do I write captions and how do I put hashtags in? How do I know what hashtags to use? Where did you learn all this? And my answer to this is very simple. You guys need to stop overthinking it because I started out just by watching YouTube videos like this, by researching topics and learning about the Instagram algorithm through YouTube videos. And the other thing that was really important for me to learn these strategies was actually doing it, like actually getting a few clients either for free or really, really low price in the beginning and actually being a social media manager. That is where I learned way more. <laughs> you learn so much more by doing than just like reading or watching YouTube videos. But that being said, if you are a total beginner and you are like, what is a hashtag or where do I find good hashtags? Um, I'm going to give you three, three key topics to master or four, four key topics to master. And you're going to go out and you're going to Google each one of those topics. And it's going to really give you the great base knowledge of how to use the Instagram algorithm. And the reason why I'm just giving you a list to do further research on is like, if I were to cover all of these topics and go to, into all the strategies of Instagram growth, you guys would literally be here for hours. Like I teach a six week long coaching program for social media managers about this. So unfortunately I can't fit it all into one video, but I've written a little list. Number one is hashtag strategy. Google, find some videos that talk about how to use hashtags on Instagram. Uh, Vanessa Lau is an amazing YouTuber. I love her stuff and she has great videos on hashtags. Next one is how to write a caption. If you are someone who struggles with writing and you're not very creative when it comes to words, you need to do some work on that. Um, Instagram isn't just about images. You have to write really captivating captions that tell a story, that are engaging, that create connection with your audience. And it's a whole process. And again, I teach this in my course and I do a whole like lesson on it. So it's very um, in depth and there's a lot to go over there. So definitely research captions. Number three is do a little bit of research around engagement and like how to grow on Instagram because the, the key thing to growing is to engage with the community and comment on other people's posts and reply to comments on your posts and really embrace that community feel. Number four is to use stories and reels. Reels is very new at the moment that I'm like kind of filming this. It's been around for a couple of months and it is popping off. Like I am seeing people who are gaining like 10,000 followers in a week from using reels. So make sure you are doing that. And it's a really great example of how Instagram is constantly introducing these new features to the app. And you, as social media managers, you need to be learning about those quickly and jumping on the trends. So I jumped on reels quite early with my clients and it really impressed them because they were kind of like, I don't know what reels is like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll film one for us, Alan, cool. And then I'd film it and be like, hey, I just got four times the amount of views on this reel than we usually get on our IGTVs or feed posts and video. And they were all like, oh my God, Alan is amazing. And I was like, I'm just using what Instagram's putting out there. So there you have it. That is question number two. I'm trying to like speed through this. I hope you guys are taking notes. Leave me a comment if you're taking notes and what's been your favorite part of the video so far. Uh, but number three, I have written down here. And the third most popular question I get is how do you work with multiple companies at once? And this is the way that you become a so successful social media manager and have that freelance lifestyle. Sure, you can go out and get a uh, sort of like a more corporate job working as an in-house in social media manager for one brand or business. But personally, I love having this freelance um, kind of like entrepreneurial life where I run my own digital marketing agency and I am my own boss and I am contracted to other businesses. So every month it changes quite a lot with how many contracts and how many businesses I'm working with. Um, just because like some months I'm really busy, like in December I had like 12 clients that I was working with because it's Christmas and everyone wants social media content. Um, and then some months I just work with people in a one-off sort of capacity where I do like a coaching session with them, a strategy session, and we create a plan for their social media. They don't actually want me to come in and manage it. So sometimes I might have like six clients a month. Sometimes I might have 13. And once again, when you're starting out, this might seem really overwhelming. You might struggle to just manage like two different business 
uh, businesses Instagram pages and that's okay I was in the same boat it's taken me two years to build to the position where I can have 13 clients on my books at once and I also have a virtual assistant who helps me out with a lot of these things but if you're worried about this starting out I think you guys need to change your mindset a little bit if you're worried like oh my god like my you know a client's gonna be like annoyed if I'm spending time working on other clients no the this industry and this business is set up that we are freelancers we are contractors and when you're doing that it's basically an understanding that you're gonna have other clients you're doing social media management for like I can't have one client pay me $800 and that's all I do that's the only person I work for sometimes you might have to remind your clients <laughs> that you actually have other clients to look after and you can't do everything at a drop of a hat for them but just make sure you remember that there's nothing wrong with having multiple clients. The key thing is the only thing you need to worry about here is not to work with your clients like direct competitor. So if you work for like a beauty brand in, I don't know, Los Angeles who make natural organic products in Los Angeles and their branding's all pink and blah, blah, blah. And you go and find another exact beauty brand that's like your client knows is their competitor has all very similar branding very similar or this exact same target audience like that would be a no-no to me <laughs> your client's gonna get really upset about that um, the key is to just find people who aren't like competitors with each other or if there's someone who's in like the same industry for example I work with two people who are in this kind of like holistic woman's health um, genre and I just like when the new girl came on board I was kind of like hey just as a dis disclaimer if you're interested in working with me like I do have another client in this industry and most people don't care in terms of how I manage all of these clients this is when you have to have really good systems in place this is when you have to start planning content in advance you have to write those captions you have to schedule content you have to research all your hashtags everything has to be organized you know sit down on a Monday write all your captions for all your clients in advance that's what I used to do in the early days and if you are an organized person you will thrive at this if you are not naturally so organized you're gonna have to put a little bit of work and effort into it um, but that is the secret to managing multiple clients question number four the fourth most commonly question I get and I'm gonna do this as my last question just because I feel like this video is getting quite long so if you do want to see a part two let me know leave a comment below and leave your questions below because I would love to answer them and also always feel free to jump onto my Instagram Alan McKenzie send me a DM I'm very active there I get a lot of messages from new followers and I will reply to or pretty much all of them and I will send you a voice note as well anyway back to my final question question number four this is another one that I get again a lot and that is what should I charge ah uh, money nobody likes to talk about money and a lot of social media managers myself included don't actually have their prices publicly listed on their website now my reason for this is because every one of my clients is different um, I think oh actually that's a lie I have two two packages on my website but the reason I only have like these two things and these two prices on here is not because I'm trying to hide it from you guys I'm not trying to like hide my price list from other social media managers the reason I do that is because every single client is different and every single client has different needs I often you know nine times out of ten I do a custom package for clients and they want specific things from one package specific things from another more photos less photos more graphics etc so that is why I don't have any sort of flat rate on my website. If you are a beginner, my advice to you is to first come up with some kind of hourly rate. Now, if you were in a more traditional corporate job or even if you were working in say like a shop or you were working in a cafe, you get benefits with your salary. You know, you get um, sick leave, you get annual leave, you get a contribution to your retirement fund. I think in the US it's called the 401 for something. In New Zealand it's called the Kiwi Saver. Anyway, because you are not getting these benefits as a contractor, your hourly rate is going to be higher. This is very common in all industries where they use contractors. Contractors cost more money because they've got to pay their own tax, they have to pay their own sort of sick leave, they have to cover all of their expenses and all of that jazz. So don't feel afraid when you're like looking at your hourly rate and you might compare it to a friend who works in a shop or works in an office and you're like oh my god my like hourly rate is almost like double this or it feels really crazy um, do not question yourself the other thing about finding your hourly rate as a social media manager is that you need to remember the value you are bringing to the table so 
your client is not just paying you for the hours you work. They're not just paying you for the one hour of engagement a week, the like three hours of writing captions a month, blah, blah, blah. They are paying you for your expertise and your knowledge. Even if you were a beginner, even if you're like, oh, I only just started researching social media management, that, that right there is time. That's the time, you know, all those hours you've spent watching YouTube where you're just like, ah, oh, just watch this on the train home, or I was just watching this while I had lunch, or like, I'm just still researching. That is work. And those hours, you are saving that from your client. Like your client doesn't have to go out and research Instagram strategy now because they've hired someone who will do that for them. And this also means that you are giving time back to your client. Time is the most valuable thing as a business owner. We always want more time. And when your client is run off their feet, they're trying to build this amazing business and they're wasting time on social media, suddenly you come in, you take over the social media, and they have all that time back. They can focus on growing other important aspects of their business and making more money. By coming in and helping this business owner, you are making them more money. Yes, you are costing them money, but you are making them more money and giving them time back. So remember that, have that confidence when you are creating your, your packages and your hourly rate. If you are looking for numbers, um, I would say when you're very in the early stages starting out, charge maybe 30 or 40 US dollars an hour. Um, for context, I charge around, I think it's like 80 US dollars. I'm in New Zealand, so the currency conversion is all weird and the dollar is going all crazy because of what's happening in the world at the moment. Um, but I think it's around 80 US dollars. And I know there are social media managers who charge up to like 150, 140 US dollars an hour. So the more you upskill, the more experience you can become, the more you can increase your hourly rate. But in saying that, I think 30 US dollars is a bloody good starting rate. And and don't be afraid to charge that. Um, for now, you guys will see if you've ever looked at my website, I charge by packages, like monthly packages. Um, but those are all worked out by using a kind of um, hourly rate. I just charge in monthly packages because I find it so much easier and like less admin and just easier for me and my client. And that is the end of the video. Oh my God, guys, I love filming these videos. I love talking about anything to do with social media management and anything to do with business. So if you have any requests for particular topics you would like me to talk about or any questions about digital marketing or being a business owner, please leave them in the comments down below. And as I said earlier, please go follow me on Instagram. I just hit over 3000 followers, um, which is very small, but very exciting for me, especially living in little old New Zealand. So um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there for today. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Bye.